Hi, welcome back to Your First Day to Coding, brought to you by Cupertino High School Robotics. Last time, we talked about the stupidity of computers and how they only listen to what programmers tell them to do. This makes programming a very interesting process, which leads into what programmers do. Contrary to popular belief, we discussed that programming is more thought-oriented than syntax or coding-oriented. We also went over the process of programming, all the way from writing pseudocode, which is basically the floor plan for what your code will be like, all the way down to compiling and running your program. There are also a few technical terms that we went over, and these terms will be used throughout the entire course of this series, and you'll probably be hearing these words throughout the tech world in several interactions. So we recommend that you look back at our previous video and review what these technical terms mean. Lastly, we discussed a few resources and showed you a couple of ideas as to where you could go on a computer if you wanted to code, regardless of what platform or language you prefer. Now, this series is primarily focused towards those that are trying to learn Java. Why? Because FIRST has made changes to the FTC program and this season, we are no longer using a LEGO NXT, which was previously utilized to compile our programs and run, run them on for our robot. And this year, it's going to be swapped with an Android phone. Therefore, Robot C, which used to be the language, and of course the IDE we used to use to program the NXT, will be switched with Java. Now, there are two alternatives to two options, I should say, that can be used to write in Java for Android. These two options are Android Studio, which is a text-based IDE, and MIT App Inventor, which is a graphical IDE. Now, the Android phone is required by first to be running 4.4 KitKat, which is created by Google, and uh, you can program it again using Android Studio or MIT App Inventor. The Android Studio environment is text-based. It's a lot like Eclipse, of course, but it's made for different things, which obviously it's for programming for Android. It also prepares you for future coding experiences because when you go out in the real world, you will be coding using similar integrated development environments. So. It is smart to use Android Studio when you're trying to learn and really looking forward, but for novices and people that tend to have trouble with programming, especially in the beginning, there is MIT App Inventor. Here at Cupertino High School for the first aid series, we'll be using the Android Studio platform, as well as Eclipse to demonstrate simple Java projects. Now, the phone will be running two applications. It will be running the Robot Controller app and the Driver Station app. Both these apps are searchable, downloadable, and free on the Android market. You can download these today. These are very good apps, and you should definitely get them. They are supported for Android KitKat, and uh, this is what your robots and your driver stations will be using to communicate with one another. The phone connects with the robot via USB cable, so everything is modernized and we are no longer using these ports. Now let's talk about Java as a language. Java was created by Sun Microsystems, which later got bought over by Oracle. Uh, it is an object-oriented object program. It uses inheritance, which we will not go over right now, but it, you should keep that in mind. It is categorized as an object-oriented program programming language, I should say. And it's currently the number one language in the world. Yes, recently it surpassed C. After being second for a long time behind C, finally it has surpassed it and is the number one popular programming language in the world right now. So, prerequisites for Java. Like building a robot or building anything, you need tools. And tools are provided to you for Java by the Java SDK, which is the Software Development Kit. You can download these, you can just make a simple Google search, Java SDK Download, and you'll find a couple of links. Uh, you also need a Java Runtime Environment. 
This allows you to run the Java program once it's compiled. In about 95% of the time, the JRE will be included in the SDK, but if after installing the SDK and writing some code, you are not being able to run your program, it's probably because you don't have a runtime environment installed, so be careful of that. You will also need an IDE or a text editor. So if you use a text editor, you will need knowledge of the use of terminal or command prompt depending on your operating system. Terminal is for Mac OS and command prompt is for Windows. This is only if you are using a text editor for coding. Of course, we recommend an IDE. For Java, we recommend Eclipse, which I use myself. And of course, for robotics, you would need the Android SDK as well, which is the Android software development kit. And of course, Android Studio. The logo for that is over here. Android Studio and the Android SDK are work together to help you create Android apps. This is the toolbox you need to create Android apps. This is the toolbox you need to program in Java. Regardless, you will need the Java SDK, so please prioritize that and make sure you download that as soon as possible. For this tutorial, we will be coding in Java later on, so we recommend that you pause this video and download Java, the Java SDK and JRE, of course, if it's not included right now, so you can code later on during this tutorial. We also recommend that you download a text editor or an IDE, uh, preferably Eclipse, if you have not done so already. Cool! So, if you have if you have all those things downloaded, you're about to learn some Java. Let's get started. So, I'm going to begin with Eclipse and writing an Eclipse Hello World application. So, Hello World is basically a program which returns Hello World as you can see down here from a previous program. This is it's become more of a ritual in the programming world where we all learn how to program by saying hello world for the first time in the programming language that we're learning. And that's what we'll be doing today. So, first thing you want to do is create a project. So, I hit control, click, new Java project. I'm going to call this project, um, CHS, nope, we are going to call this. First aid. And in this, we're going to have a package. A new package. You will understand the structure for how these things are installed and created later in a later on video, but for now, just follow along. So we've created by right clicking on your Windows and by control clicking on a Mac a first aid project and inside that by doing the same thing a new package and we've called it first aid here you can call it whatever you want now we're gonna right click or control click again and create a class a class is where your program will be stored we're gonna call this hello world don't worry about public or any of these, you can just leave these as, the, as they are. The convention is to capitalize the first letter of the class name and then obviously you would then every every single word after that would be capitalized specifically as you can see here. I could have called this hello world. Hello world program. P is capitalized. That's the convention. It's not required but it's a convention that programmers like to use. So I've created my class now I'm gonna type some code let me first type it out and you'll see I'll explain after okay so in the last video we talked about how a void or a subroutine or a function, any of those terms, in Java it's known as a void, is a set of instructions packaged under one command. In this case, the command is main. The way Java works is in whatever class you're running the code, 
it's going to run the main command. The main command is the command it will run, the command it will look for. If I called this something else and ran it, it would not run. I have to call it the main command. So this is kind of a convention. you got to remember to have this in your program before you start coding anything because everything that you want to run or you want to happen that's actually going to show up on the user screen or anything that's going to be executed needs to be in the main method. Now we're gonna do the magic. So So what we're doing here is we have this other subroutine which again is a method. This is built into Java so this was part of the toolbox I was talking about. Without the toolbox Eclipse would have been confused and would not have known what this means. So this tool which is system.out.println allows us to print whatever we want and what we print goes in here it will go in quotations and we will print hello world we're gonna save we're gonna hit the play button and there we go hello world we can call it anything else too robotics is cool and robotics is cool so anything that you put in these parentheses will print but they need to be in the quotations why that is I cannot explain at the moment but keep stay tuned in and over the course of the series you'll figure it out so this was us programming a hello world program through with the use of an IDE now what if we wanted to do the same exact thing in Sublime, for example. Let's try it out. We save this in my directory. What did I call it here? Hello world.java. Alright, so I'm going to type out my class, or I can just dump this code. It's more inconvenient. It's more convenient that way. So here I have all the code. So this class's name is hello world. So I've declared my class. I have a main method. So anything in the main method will run. Be run by the JRE. and anything in here will be printed and we want to print hello world now we can open up terminal so I've already have my directory set so what I'm going to say is java compile hello world dot java which says to compile the hello world program when I clicked on the button here the program automatically compiled and ran at the same time of course it ran after it compiled but in front of us it happened at the same time not in two different steps here we will be doing it in two different steps and as you can see there are no errors so I can run the program Java hello world and it will return hello world so there you go using a text editor we have written a simple Java program that returns hello world or prints hello world I should say and here through the use of an integrated development environment Eclipse we did the same exact thing so these are two different tools you could use Preferably, the Eclipse option would be more convenient and in the long term makes more sense. But if you really want to stick to using a text editor, that's cool. 
for the remainder of the series, we will be sticking to Eclipse and not be doing any more demonstrations using any text editors. So, thank you for watching. Next time, we will be learning some very primitive Java basics. This video was brought to you by Cupertino High School Robotics, and we love questions, so please comment below. And remember to subscribe to our channel for more updates on software, hardware, and other categories that we like to talk about for robotics and just teamwork in general. So stay tuned and enjoy your coding. This was First Aid by Cupertino High School Robotics.